Welcome back again, everybody. It's time for another Cavendish update. Before we get into the update, first I want to say thank you to everyone who reached out with their condolences and sorrows for my hurt hand. It is doing much better at the moment. It's healing nice and well. But for about a week, this is how I had to take showers. Yeah, that was fun. But don't worry, all's well. I'm healing, and I'm still able to continue on with the experiment. One of the first big changes for this week is I was able to take the square dowel and turn it down on the ends so that I was able to put on the lead sinker weights. Again, from the injury in my hand, that's how I got the holes into the sinker weights, is with the drill. But I wasn't able to actually turn down the wood. Thankfully, I was able to find a local Korean woodworking shop on the street side, and it was just amazing watching this gentleman work. Everything in this shop was controlled by one motor, with one belt going across all of the machines. It cost me about $4 for him to turn down the ends on my dowel, and it fit perfectly. And as you can see here, his woodworking skills are amazing. So let's take a look at the equipment now. Here's the table where I'm operating from. I'll be controlling everything from out here again so I do not have to go into the room. And here's my adorable little snowball, getting in the way of everything. And I've got a cable going all the way in from my computer into the room. I've also got the power box that's controlling the Arduino and the stepper motor outside the room because that does create a massive magnetic field. I've got the far windows covered with aluminum foil so that will not be creating too much of a heat disturbance. I've got everything powered through here. The Arduino motor, the sensors, the laser, everything. And as we go up onto the crossbar, I've got a camera and one of the vibration sensors. Right at the moment, there's something finicky about this vibration sensor, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. And as you can see, this is where I've got the anchor point for the tension wire. This is a guitar string, 0 0.017 millimeter. There was one smaller in the package, but I found that this one was the best for the purpose. Now, what I've also done is I've taken everybody's names that has been donating or participating somehow and I've put them in the box. Now here on the board on the bottom you can see I've got some copper wire and that is going to be used for grounding both of the heavier weights. And I've also got it set so that I've got the lead sinker weights grounded as well. The wire goes inside the sinker weight and that's wrapped around the center retention point which is connected to the guitar string which goes all the way up to the bar and I'll be grounding it from there. I've also got the copper wire on the outside of the box as an effort to try and remove some of the static electricity from the plexiglass. I've got the dryer sheets hanging down as a sign for any type of movement and removing of static electricity. Here's where one of my sensors are for heat. I've got another sensor on the floor and then two more in the box, and a dog that likes to bark. Here's the controller that Wally sent me. This is gonna be showing the four temperatures, the pressure and the humidity of the room. This information is also broadcast to a website, which I'll be showing in a little bit. Here I've got one of the temperature sensors and a second vibration sensor. You can see the new mirror on the inside. That is an optical grade mirror shining laser over onto the far wall. Now the targets on the far wall are adjustable so once I fine tune everything I'll be able to actually get the camera in there pretty close to see more specifically how far the deviation is. I've also picked up a couple smaller weights rather than the 40 pound dumbbell I got 25 and those are going to be used as a second run for the experiment. So this is the screen that I had set up for the last test run. You can see the two vibration sensors on the left and the right. There's two different readings, and the specifics of what those are will be in the final product. You can clearly see the temperature sensors and the time scrolling across the box that Wally sent. And this is the website where everything's going to be broadcast to, the environmental sensors and the vibration sensors. Right now, like I said, the crossbar one, there's something a little off with it. I've got to try and figure that out. And all of this information is going to be streamed live, publicly, so if at any time you want to see what the temperature is in my spare bedroom, you can come and take a look. Now here you can see the numbers that are on that scroll, T1, 2, 3, and 4. 
One is the top of the box, two is the crossbar, three is the bottom of the box, and four is the floor. If we compare everything right now, so the floor, 24.6. Inside the bottom of the box, 24.6. Top of the box, 25.2. So there is a slight variation in there, and we'll be able to monitor that throughout the experiment. And then the crossbar, 25.4. The next one is actually the temperature sensor inside the box that controls it all. So this one's a little bit warmer, 26.6, because it's got all those components inside. And then we've got the relative humidity that's being measured by that box and the barometric pressure. All of this will be continuously live streamed to this website. So we're going to take a look at the box vibration sensor. So these are the two readouts that come from the vibration sensor. The higher value is the raw number of what that sensor is reading. The lower value is registering the maximum or minimum change from the last gathering of data. These sensors gather data constantly, but they only broadcast to the website every 30 seconds. And you'll be able to see the change within a short period of time. So what I'm going to do now is I want to actually experiment with this and show you the change. I'm going to go into the room, and I'm going to tap on the table right below where that sensor is. The tap isn't going to be too hard. It's going to be just slightly more firm than you would if you're typing on your phone. So here we go. And you can immediately see the change. And it was a pretty drastic change, and I didn't hit the box that much. One of the things I plan on doing is actually experimenting to see how sensitive this is and what that does to the wire. What I'm going to do over the next couple weeks is once the torsion bar is at rest, I'm going to go into the room and I'm going to tap onto the crossbar right behind where the wire is with a very light tap because I want to see how much that registers, one, on the actual device, and two, with the laser on the wall to see if it actually makes any change to the torsion bar itself. This will be very valuable data as I'm leading up to the experimentation. Before the final run, I plan on letting this run without doing anything for at least a day or more so that everybody can see the temperatures, the vibrations, the movements, and everything. And then at a predetermined time, I'm going to engage the motor and move the weights into place. But I want to know if there's any movement on that accelerometer, and if it makes any change to the torsion bar, I'll call off that run until we have a relaxation of the bar. Because I want the final results of this to be as clean and pure as possible. One thing I've done over the past week since I've gotten this rig set up, you may have seen my 12-hour broadcast. That was just to get the timing. Because I'm now on the final bar, the final weights, and the final wire. With some help from AB Science, I'm going to be crunching the numbers to get the actual tension value of that guitar string. I spent the last six hours of today doing nothing but reviewing that footage and watching the motion and to figure out how long it took that laser to travel across the wall. So as you can see at this point, I'm getting really close to the final runs. I need to say an amazing thank you to all of the people that have reached out, to the people that have provided informational support, and especially those have provided financial support. Anybody who's provided financial support, your name, icon, or logo will be in the box or on the box somewhere as a way that I can say thank you to you. Because this has become a community project. It started out as something strange that I wanted to try, but it has truly become a community project and I cannot say thank you enough. So if you'd like to lend a little financial support, it would be greatly appreciated. The GoFundMe link is down below. Anybody that has either provided financial support or informational support will be in the box and they'll be on the final product as I write up the results of this. I'm really looking forward to the next couple months as this goes into a full run. Thank you everyone for following along. Thank you for your all support. This is becoming an amazing adventure. I'll see you later on this week with another video. And until then, don't forget, gravity is not just a theory. It's the law. And together we're going to prove it.